Arteta as well as Fulham take all three points, being Arsenal by two goals to one. And this poor run of form for Arsenal continues, doesn't it? And it affects their position very much in the table. They had the possibility to go top. However, that defeat against Fulham leaves them fourth in the table. They're just one point adrift of Spurs, who we'll talk about a little later on. Uh, we welcome into the show former Arsenal defender Kieran Gibbs is with us. We also welcome Mark Ogden. We're hearing from the boys. Oh, in no, a... Let's just go there. Why? It's New Year's Eve. Let's go and see Kieran suffer here. <laughs> <laughs> just, just wallow in his misery. Come on. Talk us, talk us through the demise, Kieran, of the last week or two. All right, Craig. All right, mate. It's been a, it's been a Christmas to forget. It's been a Christmas to forget for sure. Um, it's been a, a reality check. It's a reality check. It, it, it wasn't the team that we've been accustomed to. Uh, it's probably the worst worst I've seen them play for a long time actually this they started bright um but yeah everything that we've associated with them over the last 18 months just wasn't there to see that uh, relentless pace power urgency um you know they didn't, didn't manage to get any into the game enough Saka and Martinelli started well but they faded pretty early run out of ideas and I think more most importantly they've lost they'd lost that stubbornness that they've had um, throughout this season, which they've needed, which has gotten them results, um, that's that's faded as well a little bit. So um, yeah, I feel like teams are starting to suss them out a little bit more now, which I thought might happen actually after last season. You know, teams are taking them a lot more seriously. Um, the, the wingers are getting less space. Other guards getting less space. I'd, I'd like to see them mix mix their game up a little bit in the new year, and maybe maybe get someone in up top that can just allow them to go a little bit more direct, you know, it might just allow the game to open up a little bit for, for Saka's, Mark, Martinelli's, Odegaard's. Um, but, you know, it's, it's not all doom and gloom. It's, they're, still, they're still in the mix. They just need to, to, to regroup. I'll you are watching Happy, Happy, Happy New Year, people, because I told you that I was going to do some reviews and some reactions exactly on the new year. To those who are going to go watch that video that I did, uh, please... Thank you very much. Yeah, I've titled the video thank you because I really just trying to thank you guys for all the things that I've gone through. So to those who haven't checked it out, I advise you to do so because that gives you an idea of where the connect is going, going moving forward. But yeah, we continue. Football never stops, so it means we are here. Happy New Year. Transfer windows open and Liverpool still at the top. I have no idea how that happened, especially a team that nobody even expected them to be here. We are there. So we are here to talk about Arsenal versus Fulham, a game that left us all shocked. My personal review on this game, guys, will be coming out later on today. Yeah, it's January already, it's 2024. So my letter review will be coming out later today as we'll be looking at all this one. So expect that on the transfer podcast as we, mm, not really on the transfer podcast, on, but the review podcast as we talk about all the games that were played and what we are expecting moving forward. So like I'm saying guys, Arsenal are in trouble. Arsenal are in a crisis to be honest when you now think about it because these are now five games in a row and in all those five games they have either drawn, either lost. In fact, they've picked up one victory in the in all, all the five games that they've played and it's really, really worrisome. And you can hear what Kieran is talking about here is talking about the fact that it looks like the team has been found out, which is 100% honesty. They rely too much on their um, you know, wing, uh, wingers, Saka and Martinelli, and every single time when those two get the bomb, either they are marked by two players, one midfielder drops back to stop them from doing anything, or nothing comes out from this team you know you'd expected the midfield the Kai Havertz the older guard to create something meaningful so that they try to create you know while they go forward but you can see that this team has been found out so many teams take them seriously right now that season of surprise surprise that they gave us last season no longer counts because everyone expects something from us now and that's why they are really really struggling to get something and i'm really 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 curious to see how they're gonna be working out on this one because now it looks like there's so much pressure on this team and they need to deliver if they can deliver 
it's gonna be very very long time because you know the problems of last years we are seeing them right now and Mikhail Arteta needs to find new strategies to get the job done that's why hence i'm saying us now in a crisis because at this moment with the way his team is set up it looks like it's gonna be really really difficult for him to find another way of playing let me remind you of what happened last year with the liverpool when we were being destroyed i mean talking about the season before that we were going under a huge huge crisis that people had discovered how we played and Klopp had to come up and try to find ways of using some of his key opponents like for example Trent Alexander-Arnold to use him as an inverted four bag so that he creates more personnel in the midfield and from then teams have been struggling really to get or to know how to stop this team especially from functioning that's what Arteta needs to do and let me tell you something interesting so many people were crying that Zinchenko needs to be dropped he was dropped and Kivio was in. Now the problem with the dropping Zinchenko is this. Ben White is not a creative fullback. He is a defensive fullback. Kivio is also another defensive fullback. What happens when you have two defensive fullback? It means when Mikio, when Saka and, um, and um, Martinelli are running on those wings, they don't have somebody that they can also maybe try to pass the ball back so that he creates something special going forward that's what zinchenko has been called to do so but also with zinchenko and the team brings a weakness to this arsenal it feels like i'm already doing my reviews anyway let's go back to the espn guys people so that we hear what they're gonna say but there's so much to talk about arsenal that's what i'm saying check out the review show there'll be so much that we'll be talking about here i said it was the worst performance of the season that was 9 out of 10, by the way, for being uh, miserable about Arsenal. Oh, yeah? <laughs> <laughs> well, most of us put... Us, we, I mean, most of us went for an Arsenal win. I think everybody, and I think yep. it was because Fulham had lost the last two, including against Burnley, and we were looking for a response from Arsenal, which I think we all felt we would have, we would have seen and we would have got, and they needed, so we didn't get that. But, I mean, I could probably go through the whole side here and or, or every department of the, of the side and say we've talked at length about the goalkeeper but it wasn't really his fault today but that's that sort of a conundrum that has been thrown out this year the two fullbacks uh you know caviar today but you know if we're thinking about white and zinchenko mm -hmm. when zinchenko goes into the middle of the park they get something a bit extra and when he's back at left back he looks quite weak and ben white's solid but they're not getting a lot attacking wise from their fullbacks at this moment in time. I, I, I absolutely reiterate my point that the Havertz in the middle of the park is not working as it should and will not see them to a title. And, and Kieran's right. I, I think teams are starting to double up and snuff out the two, two wide guys. And when you are able to take particularly Saka out of the game for long periods, that, that's a problem. I don't think Odegaard has been been brilliant and of course they're, they're struggling with an out and out guy up front to score goals but then you know, there is a counter argument to the goals it's they need the service mm -hmm. and they're not even getting the service at the moment to, to the striker I think also what I'd like to see is, is less padding of stats in the middle of the park with these little passes and, and see a few more people particularly Odegaard and Rice or whoever's in there clipping a few more little balls over the top you know trying to thread the needle a little bit more and if you know, if six or seven passes don't come off out of 10 or 12, then so be it. But I, I, I'm always of the, the mindset, certainly when I played and I had somebody like Hen Henrik Larsson up front or whoever it was, if I played three or four bad passes and the crowd got on my back, that, that's fine. But if I played one or two uh, out of those passes, if one or two came off and he made those runs and he got on the end of it, I, I'm happy and I just feel it's a little bit too safe at the moment for this Arsenal side and there's a lot, a lot of thinking to do for Mikel Arteta uh, over the next couple of weeks about the transfer window, about his team selection and about how he's going to pick them up for the second half of the season. What impressed us so much last season about Arsenal? You know, Craig is actually speaking about what I was about to actually do when I was explaining what I feel like Arsenal is going through, which is the fact that it looks like they've been found out. Now people are now, teams are starting to double up in terms of what they offer their output whenever they're attacking 
teams are now starting to double up, trying to, in a way, eliminate Saka and Martinelli. And to be honest, those have either been that source of creation or that source of goals. If you look at what they did last season, go back and watch all their games if you can. Even the highlights, you will see that most of Arsenal's goals are coming from those guys, either in creation or actually in finishing the chances. What they tried to do this season was, of course, the Odegaard was really there and there, but what happened to Odegaard here was for him to do more as a midfielder, it, he had to work hand in hand with. Saka in terms of his attack, but now when Saka is eliminated He leaves Odegaard stranded, which means he struggles to find the right personnel around him to work with Declan Rice defensively will do the work Kai Havertz We talked about this. He's not the man and we're still gonna keep seeing this going forward in terms of all the departments that we're talking about We're still gonna see this going forward that he will struggle which means Odegaard, in terms of trying to creation, will lead him to either kick the shots and no and the go nowhere, or try to do something expensive, or maybe try to create something meaningful. Which at this moment it seems like he's really, really struggling, and it's gonna take so much time for them to find the right, the right way to get something meaningful of this team, for them to actually start producing something meaningful, for them to do more. So it means that this requires so much thinking. For Mikel Arteta to try and create a winning mentality of this team, like I'm saying, people were talking about no, this is, is these are just the basics. The teams are not doing what they were doing, but there is an end to this. There is some way that you have to look at in this, which is also the other teams knows what the team is gonna do before they do, which we are all screaming. Arsenal are now so predictable that it's easy for us to stop them. It's easy for other teams to stop them. So if that is not dealt with, if that is not found a better way to deal with, then Arsenal are going to be in this trouble. And if this crisis might even continue. That's why I keep calling it a crisis. Anyway, let's hear what Shaka has to say. Throughout most of the campaign, Shaka says, never say die. Yeah. You know, we saw those late equals, those late winners. But here... Who's that? <laughs> <laughs> uh, here, like, once Fulham took the lead, there was no response. There, there was no response at all. And, and, and the most amazing thing about this game for me is how much of it Fulham actually controlled. Mm. Um, you know, I, I'm expecting a, a high-energy Arsenal who's pressing Fulham, forcing them into mistakes. We know the quality that, that they can have. But that never came. And, and Fulham, in the end, had control of the ball, pinned Arsenal back. Arsenal just kind of sat deep, allowed allowed Fulham Fulham to play in the build-up before before the first goal. And as much as the, as Fulham's equaliser came as a counter a counter attack, Fulham had the ball for about five minutes before that, and then kind of broke, and then and then they broke on them. Um, and then once Fulham do get get back on on level pegging, there, there's simply no response. There again, there, there's no change of, of anything. Craig says Fulham. Well, I'm not sure if you're suggesting that Fulham do a good job of taking Saka out of the game. I think Saka, at this point, is just taking himself out of the game. I, I, I'm, you see the chance, the one chance that, that he had, and that really summed up Saka, not just today, but, but of recent weeks. Mm. And, and that, for me, is a concern, because you've been able to rely on Saka or Martinelli or Odegaard at times. Late on in games, you've seen Rice pop up with, with, with goals. That kind of papers over the fact that, as, as we were saying earlier in the week, up front, they still don't have that out-and-out -out striker. Jesus wasn't doing it early in the week, and Ketcher didn't offer an awful lot today. And so when Arsenal needed a goal, and you, you, inevitably you're looking in that, in that number nine position, you, you're, coming up, you, you're coming up blank. And yeah, Mark, we saw... So interesting from Chuck, what he's talking about is... As much as we are going to blame how other, team, other teams are doing so well to deal with players like Shaq and Martinelli, Shaq, uh, Saka, for an example, of all the players, he has not been really in a good form. And uh, the problem is this. When Martinelli, when Saka is, in, is off form, it's easy, very, very, very easy for us to eliminate Martinelli. Because I think people knows this and they've talked about this that for Sack and Martinella to work, it seems like they work together. They always have to be connecting for them to produce something meaningful. And in this case, 
we find that the other one struggles because the other one is not in the game and at this moment for such a long time Martinelli has been out of the game he has not really been playing so well which means Saka struggles to even get something and to make it matters worse every player can be awful but I think Saka is starting to get annoyed with with him being off form now hence you see some crazy tackles that is doing you see some problems that is causing and some things that is happening and in terms of controlling the game that was one of the most weirdest things i've ever seen arsenal are whether they're not playing so good or whatever they're doing what we always know of them is they always try to control the game especially of this season look at the game that they lost against fulham as uh, against um, west ham as much as they lost the game they controlled the game but in this game you could see that whatever that is happening fulham are actually in an upper hand anyone who can go watch this game you can tell me that you had feelings that fulham were gonna do something because they were controlling the game that's where the problems are with this team and i wonder how Mikel arteta is gonna do about it we heard him talk about transfers like where well, we have been told but let's find out exactly what's gonna hear what's gonna really happen i'm excited to see where this goes or obviously post-match arteta being frank about not only what he saw on the pitch but looking ahead to january he said no this is the team we won't be doing any business they haven't got any money. I mean, let's be honest, they haven't got the, the headroom to, to bring in a striker like Ivan Tony or Victor Ossiman. They just haven't got it. They, they spent over £200 million in the summer. And, you know, these FFP regulations or the, the Premier League's sustainability rules, they, they do have some teeth now, as Everton have discovered. So clubs don't want to be infringing those rules. And, and Arsenal don't have the funds to, to bring a striker in. Now, you could argue that maybe they, they invested badly in the summer by spending so much on Havertz when they could have put that aside for a striker. But they chose to take Havertz and now they've got a problem because obviously most clubs want Ivan Tony because he's a proven Premier League goal scorer and he's back available again in mid-January. But Arsenal's problem is that Chelsea want him too and Chelsea always find the money. But Brentford probably won't want to sell because, you know, Brian and Buemo is going to be out for, for two or three months. They really need Ivan Tony around just to keep them in the Premier League. So the options for Arsenal are quite thin on the ground. They might do a loan, but... The, the proper option of signing a proper centre forward isn't open to them because they spent, I think it was over £200 million in the summer, so they haven't got that, that headroom, like I say, to, to go and buy somebody in January to make the difference. I mean, if they, if they brought somebody in, it could be the difference between winning the title and not, but the longer they leave it without a striker, the, the more they're going to fall away. Right, so that's it. Sorry, people, I ran too far. I didn't hear exactly what was going to be told. I thought you was talking about getting players, but the problem is this, as no fans, your, your team doesn't have money. Your team doesn't have money. They've already used that 200 signing the Kai Havertz, you know, the people we help about. Unless maybe you are going to be doing some serious business of selling players and they're actually giving you money back, which you can use to actually try to do something in the future, you're going to be in trouble. But the problem is this. When you do that, what about this? Remember, you, 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 you took your goalkeeper and he's on loan and you need to sign him. That will be somewhere where your money will go home, unless you are saying maybe you sign him on this over the summer. But with Brentford, I agree on that. They need Ivor Tony, which is clear. They do need a striker, a gunman who can finish something. Because as much as the, at City, Gabriel Jesus was doing so well, we all know now that he's not really the man because he's struggling to even play as a false name. He cannot combine the other two to actually produce something, which is a problem. So what are they really going to do? What exactly is Mikel Tita going to be focusing on? Because now the problem has to be him sitting down. I kept on hearing when I was watching the AFTV, by the way, yesterday when I was watching... Oh, last year. I'm, I'm still, sorry, I'm still really lost over the 2020, 2023, 2024, you know, yes. But I kept hearing something from the people who were talking at the FTV and they kept on repeating on, he has to go to Dubai, get to try to find out ways to play with this team because this is the team he has and he has to produce something. And now it's really, really clear. We can see why he is stuck here because they have used up their money over the summer and they have to create a team that is a winning team right now or if they will be in trouble. So we'll be here. We'll be there. We'll be there, people, and we'll be watching what happens with Mikel Arteta. But I'm more interested to hear what 
the SPN guys are gonna say more because you know we are just talking about all the things that is happening with us now here. So let's hear what they have to say. So it's all gonna be down to Arteta now to try and work out how he can fix this problem in attack. How would you deal with it? How do you address that? Well, you saw what Fulham did. Uh, early balls into the box. I think, you know, too much back and forward and sideways and back and out the other side. And that's allowing teams to get back in and, and, and you know, make it difficult and sit deep for them. So I think they need to... I really feel they need to quicken up the play again. Yeah. I, I feel it's become a little pedestrian and a little, you know a little slow in the build-up. Uh, and I just feel the need to inject a bit of pace into the game as well. And I, again, I think we have to see more of Trossard, less of Havertz, uh, to be honest, in the starting eleven. Uh, and I, I agree with Mark in a sense. I mean, with two players that were really sought after in the summer, it seemed, was, was Mason Mount, who's not a bad player. But Man United were hell-bent on spending uh, a fair chunk of money on them. And they, they, they themselves had restrictions in their spending ability. And Arsenal and, and, and Kai Havertz, which, you know, Mikel Arteta had this thing in his mind that, that, that this is going to be the midfield that's going to take us to the next step. And it quite frankly hasn't been. Now, they're not a million miles off the top. Mm. Of course they're not. And this is not a disaster for them. But there's nothing that's shown, with, certainly with Havertz in the side, in this position, that they're any better than they were last year. So he's going to have to solve the midfield. If he can't solve the midfield, he won't win the Premier League because if the midfield's not functioning, the front line will not function. And think about it. The most successful team in, in, in England at the moment are Manchester City. They do not carry passengers. Yeah. If they have passengers, they're out the team. Somebody else comes in, the conveyor belt keeps going. If that person struggles, they're back out. So he's going to have to figure out who he can rely on and who he can't. You're not going to win the Premier League carrying one or two players. Manchester City don't do it and others don't. And if Arsenal continue to carry players like they are at the moment, it's quite simple. They're not going to win the title. Uh, Kieran, you were back in England. You, in fact, scored, saw Kai Havertz score in the clash against Brighton. However, you look at games like today, and as Craig says, you know, he, he looks like a passenger. Yeah, I mean, he obviously missed the last game, but um, he was quiet today. He was quiet. I think... For me, if, if you're not going to go and get a, a striker and go all out offensively and just try and blow teams away, then Craig's right. You need to shore up the midfield um, and and just try to to shut up shot. They've they've kept one clean sheet, I think, in the last seven, which you know that's that's not the Arsenal that we've seen um, over the last eighteen months. So. You know, it's, it's probably the best idea to go and get someone like a, a Douglas Louise or... They haven't got know, any money, Kieran. They haven't got money. Yeah, but you can swap players. Oh, those guys. <laughs> you can swap players. There's deals to be done there for sure. For sure. You know, it's Emil Smith-Rowe. There's um, Eddie. There's there's other players. There's there's definitely deals to be done there, I think, in, in this window for, for, for something. But if, if I was to do anything, I, I would probably... I would probably show up the midfield um, and just hope that in the second half of the season that, that Saka, um, Martinelli, Erdegaard come alive like they did last season um, and, and, and just manage to, to hit form at the right time. Uh, that, that, would be, that would be my, my hope. But, but, but it's, up to him, it's up to the manager now, isn't it? I mean, he had lots of praise last year. I don't think anybody blamed him really for, for Arsenal falling away at the end and City coming through like a train. I don't think anybody with any uh, common sense thought, oh, that was terrible from Mikel Arteta. They lost Saliba, they had some defensive problems, they had a smaller squad, they ran out of steam. They were the best team for quite a considerable time. They, are, they aren't this year. They're just, they're just not the best team at this moment. They've had their little moments, but it's up to him now, isn't it? He's, 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 as Augie said, he's nailed his colours to the mast mm -hmm. with the budget. It is now up to him to solve the problems. Okay, so um, it seems like hey, everything that Kieran or ever talk about when it comes to Arsenal is either involving, tra involving transfers, which at this point Arsenal cannot do. But let us be honest, we all know what they did. That Declan Rice signing has its pros and its cons. And to be honest, at this point, it looks like 
Mano wise, they are, they are really, really, really limited. They cannot continue doing some businesses. And it's going to really, really affect Mikel Arteta and his, you know, charges over the leg. He has to find ways. And you are talking about the, like, people like the likes of Douglas Lewis. There is no way that is going to happen because there is no way. I don't think Aston Villa, with the way they are, they know that they're in the strike territories. They'll be selling, they'll just be giving their player for free. That is not happening. They'll be demanding money. And that's one thing Arsenal don't because they've already used up their money. You know, West Ham got to put their pants on that one. I'm not saying Jacqueline Rice is a, is a bad signing, but I'm saying that they used most of their money and that Kai Havertz the impact is signing that they were doing the one they were saying that it's a little bit I have, no, I have no idea I have no idea and I think Craig really mentioned this I don't get the idea that people keep kept on praising Mikel Arteta for doing some foolish transfer decisions I was seeing on here and we were talking about how much this could impact the team because now when I'm hearing those guys talking they're saying that Kai Havard is to go out and we have to see more of Trossard in the team. Kai Havard is one of the guys that Mikel Arteta was saying that no, he wants to sign him, he believes in him, he has something that he wants to do with him. Look where we are now with him. And also we had as well of something like we also need to get rid of the, I don't, <laughs> I'm really, really, really confused here people because I want to make sense of the things that I'm talking about here but we also heard that he wanted David Rea because he is a good goalkeeper. He would do something, but as okay, we cannot blame him for this game against Fulham. But we all know 90% of the games, this guy has been a passenger all the time long he has played for this team. And the problem with him being a passenger is that it always affects the team going forward. It always affects the team because Saliba and Gabriel, as much as they want to play the high line, they also have to remember that they have a goalkeeper who has some difficulties which they need to protect so these are all some small little bit of hints and problems that they're dealing with which when we put together it's just turning the whole thing upside down and that's where the problem for this Arsenal team is that's where the whole problem of Mikel Arteta is he thought he was too clever doing some crazy signings which we all 100% know that the teams that sold these guys won't want them back in their team Maybe rare, I don't know. But they won't want their teams. But all these things, doing some unnecessary signings, doing some things that they didn't really need to do, it's now all coming back all together and it's forcing this Arsenal to look like it's a team that is missing so much. Because at the end of the day, we all know the truth of the matter. They need a striker. Whether we're going to look at it elsewhere or what, Gabriel Jesus, of course, there's a reason why Pep Guardiola left this guy to go. Because he, they, he knew that he was never going to be the guy that he needed to go forward. And now it's clear. And like I'm saying, this whole team cannot keep focusing and hoping that Kai Hava becomes a world-class midfielder. Especially if they keep talking. Like the way their fans keep telling us that they're going to win the league. Especially if this keeps happening. That will stop us now from trying to even achieve anything you know that a team can achieve when they want to go forward so that's now in a crisis to be honest and it's up to Mikel Arteta to try and turn water into wine because we all know he's not allowed to spend money whether he's got I don't know what is he going to do how much is he going to say the likes of Kieran Tini people are talking about it my question is that how much because they have not been used and the other teams have been noticing. The best I think they can get is 20 million quid. That's the best. So there is a problem. I and mean, there's no striker you're gonna get who can come and be a changing striker for 20 million quid. What an interesting time to be an Arsenal fan. We talked about all these things and now they're being clear now, people can see them. So coming back to hand them. Anyway, let me know your thoughts in the comment section. Am I being too harsh or am I just giving you the truth as it is? Because whether we try to sugarcoat it, whether we try to hide it, the truth of the matter is this. Us now in a crisis, they need to find something meaningful for them to actually be the team that everyone keeps talking about that they can be. Because at this moment, we haven't seen it. This has been Sam, guys. Thank you very much for watching. Click the like button, subscribe to the content. And like I said, go watch out the video that I made where we talk about what's coming ahead for the football connect and to those people who are watching with me thank you very much 
go check it out who have been with me in 2023 i mean thank you very much can't wait to see how the community grows from here exciting times from here people we are out thank you i'm out peace